Hello and welcome to another flight gear tutorial. In this part one, I want to um, show you how to operate the Tupolev 144 Delta in flight gear. Um, so in this first part, I will only cover the startup, takeoff, and also uh, the climb procedure to our cruising altitude of uh, 17,000 meters and then after a little time lapse where while we cross the plains of Siberia I will add a part two where we sh where I will show the um, slow down descent and uh, approach and landing procedure for this plane so let's get into the cockpit Fortunately, there are auto start options, so you don't have to start the engines all manually. So the first thing you do here is auto start pre-fueling. On battery power. That takes about two and a half minutes. On battery power. And um, after this first part is finished, we will do the uh, the fuel loading and the boarding using this ground supply um, option pressing the fuel and board button here and I pre-configured the fuel load so you can see main tanks 50 tons and tanks number one and two are completely filled and this fuel load will be sufficient for our trip uh, today from Moscow Sheremetyevo Airport to Almaty International Airport and that was the route that the actual Tupolev 144 airliner uh, did operate uh, in the years 1977 to 1978 before uh, this uh, passenger transport operation was stopped. So this sound was because of the uh, thrust lever that was in the wrong position. I have to put it to idle. Okay, now after the generator is online, I can lower the nose cone. That's with uh, shift foxtrot on your keyboard. Let's have a look from outside. So you have to lower the nose to 70, 17 degrees for the takeoff so that you get good visibility on your runway. And the second preparation with uh, using the flaps button on my joystick, I will uh, extend the canal wings behind the cockpit. So press it three yeah, times right. and then you can see how the canals are extending. These two preparations you need for a successful takeoff. Those canal wings, they stabilize the plane while flying with uh, low velocities below 400 kilometers per hour. Note that all the instruments here and all the readings are in the metric system, so right in on. meters and kilograms, and not in uh, knots and feet like you may be used to. So if you have to do the math, if you have to quickly calculate, you have to multiply, for example, the altitude here in this altimeter by three, and this is, gives you roughly your uh, altitude um, in feet. So our target cruising altitude, I can make the yoke disappear pressing the Y button on my keyboard. The target altitude will be 17,000 meters. So I turn this dial here to enter the target cruising altitude of 17,000 meters. We will need this adjustment later. Okay, so we are now ready to load the fuel and the passengers. So we go to ground supply. We pre-selected uh, the target fuel load and then I press the fuel and the boarding button. And now the plane should be sufficiently fueled up for the journey from Moscow to Almaty. Then uh, another thing, the air pressure. Let's have a look at uh, the weather conditions. So it reads uh, 1006 hectopascal. And normally this is after startup of the plane, when you start up the flight gear flight simulator. Here in this plane, this is pre-selected. So 1006 is not available, but 1007 will do. 
And once we have reached uh, 2000 meters altitude, I will change the Q&H to standard to, um, te uh, to 1013 uh, hectopascal. Okay, now how about the route manager? Here, autopilot menu is disabled, but you got the route planner. And I already loaded um, a flight plan from the internet, from flight plan database. This is a standard flight route from Moscow to Almaty. I think it will more or less fit for, for this uh, plane, but I think for a plane that is capable of cruising in Mach 2 velocity, maybe there are too many checkpoints here, too many course corrections. So we have to tweak it to make it work. Uh, let's have a look at the map to see what this route looks like. You can see it is goes to southeast. And here is a sharp turn. We will eliminate this by deleting the two uh, waypoints AKB and Adrat. Let's look here in the checkpoint list. AKB, remove, Adrat, remove. And now this has smoothened our flight path. And at the end of the route, this just goes for a direct approach to the runway. Of course, you cannot approach the runway like this uh, with your plane. So before we uh, start the uh, approach pattern, we have to find out which runway orientation is in use. It's either direction 50 degrees or 230 degrees. The ATIS radio, from Almaty will give us uh, the sufficient information to choose if we have to approach Almaty from the west or from the east. So that's to be decided later. Some more entries. So for the takeoff, I will not choose a departure pattern. I will also not choose a runway yet. So no approach pattern, no stars. Cruising altitude will be around about 51,000 feet cruising speed 525 knots and that should equal uh, roughly Mach 2 in, a, in this altitude of uh, 51,000 feet. So let's activate this and already jump to the first waypoint Nocti. Jump to and now for the HSI for, for the HSI instrument I have to choose the input signal here with this uh, switch on the overhead panel, I switch it to the leftmost position, HSI source, INS is the initial uh, inertial navigation system. And that should make this green line on my HSI instrument, on my, on my compass instrument, point into the direction of the first waypoint here, Nocti, this radial here. And this we will use after takeoff to turn the plane into the direction of the first waypoint Nocti using the autopilot. Okay, next thing, we have to start up the four engines. Here the exhaust gas temperature is still zero. So auto start startup. This takes uh, around about five minutes. So now, the board engineer will fire up one one uh, engine after the other, and once this is done and the APU is stopped, we are ready for takeoff. This warning signal should disappear by itself. It, if you receive such a warning uh, signal and it annoys you, the warning sound, you can deactivate it, you can cancel it, pressing the W button on your keyboard. Okay, next thing, our transponder for the squawk, it is adjusted to 4711, but the transponder mode is on standby, so I will turn it to mode Sierra, which transmits the code 4711 and our current altitude. Now a quick overview of the autopilot um, control system. Here 
on this panel on your yoke, you've got different buttons to Very operate tight. the autopilot of this plane. So this button here on top, when you press it, you activate the toga mode, so take off go around. This will make the thrust lever position of your plane go to maximum. So it detaches uh, the, the thrust lever position of the plane here in the simulation from your actual thrust lever position on your, jo on your uh, joystick. So you have to readjust then on your joystick later. And uh, that will make the plane fully accelerate uh, for an auto takeoff uh, procedure. You could also uh, do a manual takeoff as well, just pushing the thrust lever of your joystick forward on uh, manually. That's uh, just as good. So the yoke symbol here on the right side, it indicates that you've got manual pitch control with your joystick or yoke, whatever you're using here for the simulation. On the left side, it is for the roll movement, meaning uh, to control the ailerons here. This, uh, when you press the yoke symbol on the left side, you always get an information uh, tag when you cross with your mouse pointer, when you cross this button, then it tells you that the manual uh, roll is on. To keep the, uh, to keep, uh, the plane in a neutral, position so to level the wings you press this button here on the left side in the middle then uh, to hand over the pitch control of your plane from the, from your yoke to the autopilot you press this button here on the right side and then with the two keyboard keys f4 and f5 you can pitch down and pitch up um, controlling the autopilot. So you have to remember these two shortcuts. F4 and F5 are two keys that you will have to use quite frequently during the flight. When you have leveled the plane here, you can do a, a roll left maneuver, pressing F7 on your keyboard. You can roll right, you pressing F8, and you can level the wings again, pressing F6 on your keyboard. The speed of your plane is controlled using this yellow speed bug here in the speedo uh, speedometer. The speedometer is in kilometers per hour. So after takeoff, we will try to target for 400 kilometers per hour. And this is done using control and page up and control page down to increase or decrease the target speed, which is indicated by this yellow speed bug here in the speedometer. Now, if you want to make the plane follow the flight plan that is inserted in your route manager, you have to press these two buttons here. First, the flight director route roll to arm this option. And then to finally activate the option, you have to press this left arrow button on your autopilot panel here. And then the plane will follow the path of those different waypoints of the flight plan that you've entered in the route manager. To make the plane uh, ascend or descend to a certain target altitude, meaning the altitude that you have adjusted here in this altitude instrument, you have to use these two buttons on the right side of your uh, autopilot panel. You first arm the option, pressing this center button here, flight director root pitch. And then to activate this option, you have to press this arrow button but sometimes it refuses this command. So sometimes you have to try many times and you have to try different pitch options before the uh, autopilot finally accepts this command to follow, to follow uh, the pitch, your pitch um, selection with this right arrow button. We will maybe experience these uh, problems later once we are on our um, cruising flight level of 17,000 meters. So all four engines are up and running. Uh, thrust lever is set to idle, which means 40%. And let's have a final look from outside. Yeah, nose is down. Canars are deployed. 
that looks all fine. We just have to wait for the APU to be shut down and then we are ready for takeoff. Just two more things about uh, the auto throttle speed management. Pressing this button here with a V on it, uh, it will make the plane hold its current speed in kilometers per hour, which is indicated here by the speed bug. And here this M and M slash T, this yellow button on the left side, it will make the plane hold the current Mach speed. And that's not the same because the Mach speed, it depends very much on the altitude where you're at. And this button here on the lower right side, it's to hold the current altitude. So to level the plane, to, to, uh, to put the plane's nose pitch to neutral so that it keeps the current altitude. So we received the ready to go message here, ready for taxi. We have already taxied to the beginning of the runway. So we are ready for takeoff. I will deactivate the wheel brakes with shift Bravo. And then I press this button here on the autopilot on top to activate the TOGA um, auto takeoff sequence. You see it makes those indicators go up for the for the thrust lever position. I will also follow with the thrust lever on my joystick. You receive commands from your female co-pilot here telling you when to rotate. Speed increasing. Engineer, ready. Let's slow. Ready. Let's go. Disabling. 300. Rotate. Minimums. Safety. Retract the gear. gear and dropping. retract the thrust lever to 50% thrust, not to overspeed because uh, the nose is still down and the canards are extended. Make sure that you uh, don't fly faster than 400 kilometers per hour. I'm rolling to the right to make the plane align with the with the first waypoint Nocti. Yeah. Okay, still manual controls. Now I want to pl the plane first to level the wings. So this is way too steep. I will activate pitch hold. And with F5, I make the plane pitch up slightly. Make sure that you keep a positive climb all the time, something between zero and 10 on your virtual, uh, vertical speedometer. Five, five is a decent uh, pitch angle, or it's a climb rate. It's not the pitch angle, it's a climb rate. And once we have reached 2000 meters altitude, I will level the plane and then retract the canards. This is always one of the most tricky and uh, dangerous moments of the flight. Retracting the canards changes the aerodynamic of the plane completely. So you lose a lot of lift on the front of your plane and you have to counteract it uh, with the pitch angle. Um, like with the Concorde, you can do um, you can do uh, um, elevator trimming with the with the fuel tanks. So with Control K, you activate the auto auto center of gravity auto CG to climb because currently we are climbing. You can uh, repeat this command Control K to make the plane go to. Uh, cruising so to for a neutral um, trim fuel trim descent fuel trim and switch it off altogether and now we go back to climb fuel trim and your uh, aircraft engineer will do all the work of uh, trimming between the front and aft fuel tanks let's have a look from outside so the gear is retracted got quite a steep angle of attack 
but if the if we exceed certain limitations then here this alpha light on the left of your dashboard will be lit it means alpha means it's an angle of attack warning that the angle of attack is incorrect mostly if it's too steep so once we've reached 2000 meters i will try to level the plane and then um, and then retract the canards now instead of just leveling the wings i want to make the plane follow the predefined flight plan so i first arm this option and then i activate the option which normally results in a in some kind of a rolling maneuver so we roll just a little bit to the right let's have a look at the map yeah we are already well aligned with our flight path so we'll just require some minor corrections speed is 400 this is okay we are almost at 2000 meters altitude i have to adjust the altimeter to standard air pressure 1013 hectopascal this is standard air pressure and now i want to level the plane pressing this h button for altitude hold and now with the flaps up button on my joystick, I will uh, retract the canards. Let's have a look what this does to our pitch angle. So the autopilot tries to counteract the sudden uh, loss of lift on the on the front of the plane. Now we get a warning that we are. This is this angle of attack warning here, showing you this alpha um, light here. So we will speed up the plane from 400 to 450 kilometers per hour, and this should solve the problem. Also, um, we will raise the nose cone now, uh, pressing the F button, pressing it twice. So this warning here is a velocity that we are too slow, but now that's gone. Okay, let's pitch up. So we will now climb to a little bit above 3000 meters. So to be above this um, ceiling of 10,000 feet under which uh, you're obliged to follow the speed limit of 250 knots. So we are now uh, around about 240 knots here. And then we will level the plane and speed it up uh, to to a higher speed, but not yet supersonic. It will be something like 85% like of the speed of sound. And then climb to 10,000 meters, which roughly equals 30,000 feet. And there we will accelerate the plane to go supersonic. So we're now above 3000 meters. I will level the plane. And also with control K, I will uh, advise the board engineer to uh, give us a, a neutral fuel trim. And now we will accelerate the plane using control page up 
to crank up this little yellow speed bug from 450 to 600 kilometers per hour, which is still subsonic. Have a look from outside. So we've reached 600 kilometers per hour. We want to keep this speed while climbing to 10,000 meters altitude. So a climb rate between 5 and 10 will do. Just make sure that uh, you don't slow the plane down with a too steep pitch angle because you want to keep this speed all the time here. You don't want to sacrifice speed for altitude or climb rate and vice versa. So below 10 here is a quite um, safe um, climb rate and 20 should be the absolute maximum that you are that you're using. So at the moment the plane seems to be fine, no warnings. So we're climbing now to 10,000 meters altitude. There we will level the plane again, go supersonic, and then do our final climb to 17,000 meters, which we pre-selected here in this instrument. Okay, maybe it's time to show you some navigation options here. So you can make the plane you can uh, control the autopilot's direction manually or semi-manually, or you can uh, use the flight plan that you've entered. And the third option is to use VOR DME beacons. So let's have a look in the map. And let us show some nav IDs. For example, here, this beacon PNZ, it should be in range. The data reads 113.8 megahertz. So let's go to the overhead panel using the V button on your keyboard. Okay, so these two frequencies here on top, they are for communication. For example, this 129.8, this is the 80s frequency of the Almaty airport. We need this later. And the two lower frequencies, they are for NAV1 and NAV2. So I will enter the 113.8 into our, my NAV1 radio. So those uh, buttons here, they are very dark. You can light them up with Control c So 113.8. Okay. Okay, and you can control this radial to the beacon using those two uh, direction instruments here on the right side of the co-pilot's place. So we go with the V button, go to the co-pilot side. And here for NAV1, we, we got now uh, an angle of 230 degrees. I will change it to something like 100 degrees. And now, with this switch here on the overhead panel, you've got different options which input is used in your, H in your HSI instrument, meaning in this compass here with a green line. 
So at the moment, the autopilot is following this flight plan here that we've entered. And now I will change to uh, the autopilot to just wing leveler to keep the current direction. And now, for example, when you turn this, when you turn this overhead switch here from the leftmost position, INS, to direct nav 1, it will make the plane change the course and head to the selected VOR in a direct in a direct uh, approach. So it will turn directly towards this radial. So let's do this. We press this left button and that should make the plane bank to the right and should make it aim directly for the VOR whose um, uh, frequency we've entered in the radio stack. can see this dashed yellow line it should now directly point to towards the VOR it doesn't do it immediately it needs some adjustments and then finally the plane will aim directly for this VOR okay we're now on 10,000 feet so I will level the plane and make it return to the okay let's keep this altitude for the moment and finish our little demonstration here um, about how to navigate so we use the wing leveler and then the next option here is to go directly to uh, nav number two but this is not in use at the moment and then instead of a direct approach to the to the nearest VOR or to the one that you've selected here with a frequency, you can follow a certain radial to approach this VOR. In this case, the radial that we have entered into this uh, directional instrument here on the right side with a with a direction of 100 degrees, which is represented by this blue line here in your map so the plane would try to intercept this radial of 100 degrees and from there to approach this VOR following this uh, 100 degrees radial that would be that would be the consequence so you can also see it indicates that we are now left of this radial and when i when i issue the command to follow this radial First of all, I have to activate here the flight direct rule uh, role, uh, and then to activate it after arming it, and then the plane will try to intercept this radial. For example, you use this option also to intercept an ILS beam uh, when you're turning final uh, at your approach pattern. Okay. So this was just a little demonstration how to navigate using uh, your radio stack and the autopilot. And now I will level the wings again. Jump to the next, jump to the next waypoint Gamdi because we have already passed Nocti. So jump to. Now Gamdi will be on in our uh, route manager. And now I turn this, this uh, navigation switch overhead to the leftmost position again, inertial navigation system, to make it follow the predefined flight path. So we go to flight director rule, uh, root roll on and activate. And now the plane should turn left to intercept the next, uh, the next, um, Waypoint Gamdi. I think I will skip even Gamdi and uh, make the plane continue to the next one, Ipla. So Ipla, jump to. 
So this saves some miles that we have to go. Okay, after this little demonstration, we will take care of our speed and altitude management again. So we are now at 10,000 feet, which uh, 10,000 meters, which roughly equals 30,000 feet. So we are high enough to go supersonic. So I will accelerate from 600 to 800 kilometers per hour. And also the fuel trim. So I do this with control page up and fuel trim with control K. I will adjust it to cruise because we are still keeping our plane leveled to make it a little easier for the plane to accelerate. And this will make us go supersonic because at the moment we are just below the sound barrier here in your Mach speedometer. And now we are crossing the sound barrier, but it is not animated. Uh, at this plane model. When you look from outside, you don't see something like a Mach cone or, or any, um, any uh, animation for it. You just have to rely on your instruments. Okay. So we will wait until our plane has reached 800 kilometers per hour. This roughly equals Mach 1.2 uh, in this altitude. And then we will climb to our cruising altitude of 17,000 meters. Okay, we are fast enough. Now first the fuel trim using control K, changing to auto CG climb. And now pitch hold and we pitch up the nose to climb to 17,000 meters while keeping the speed at 800 kilometers per hour, which makes the Mach speed climb uh, subsequently. Once we've reached 17,000 meters uh, cruising altitude, we will finally accelerate from 800 to 1,000 kilometers per hour. And in that altitude, it will roughly equal Mach 2 speed. Just monitor the speed. Uh, the speed should not drop while you are climbing with the plane. I can uh, also use the autopilot now to demonstrate how to uh, guide the plane manually back to this flight path. So I go to the wing leveler and then pressing F7 on my keyboard, it makes the plane bank to the left. And once I'm on an interception course with this uh, flight route here, with the purple flight path, I will press F6 to level the wings again. Okay, I press F6, which levels the wings. And now we continue for a couple of kilometers until we intercept uh, this flight plan here. And then I make the plane bank to the right to intercept this uh, flight path. So
So uh, those messages on top here, they are uh, they are in orange color when you, the plane is out of the pre-planned uh, trimming range here. So the the uh, plane's engineer is very busy to do the fuel pumping from front to aft to trim the plane backwards to to uh, to support the climb operation. Now, when these uh, these messages are in white, it means you are within the pre uh, predefined corridor of um, of fuel trimming. Meaning, white means okay. Orange means potentially not okay. Maybe you have to double check the trim with your Control K buttons. You can also see, although the uh, the plane's speed in kilometers per hour is totally stable at 800 kilometers per hour, the Mach speed of the plane keeps increasing while we are climbing. Okay, let's check which is the next waypoint. It's Epla, so that's correct. Okay, we have already turned this switch to inertial navigation, meaning follow the flight plan. And when we're about to intercept this purple line here, I will make the plane follow this flight path. Okay, let's do this now. Now the plane should bank to the right to intercept the flight path. So one more button to be explained here. This button here on the lower left side of the autopilot panel, it says course hold. Course hold means uh, to make the plane uh, turn into the direction of this yellow a heading bug on your HSI instrument, but I was unable to figure out how to move this um, how to move this um, directional bug here, this little uh, bug in the HSI. So it would be helpful if if one of you spectators uh, can find out how to move. Uh, this heading bug here in the HSI instrument, how, how this is done, because I did not find out. I tried many different uh, options and ways, and I was unable to find out how to move it. And so this lower left button course hold, it remains unusable for me at the moment. It would always make the plane turn to the north zero degrees, and this is no use. So this is still... Um, unsolved mystery for me in this plane how to uh, how to operate the heading bug also i did not yet seriously try to figure out how the flight computer um, here works with calculating the distance and angle to the next waypoint this is also something that is not covered by this tutorial or by the second part of this tutorial maybe later i will be able to find out how to manually operate the flight computer for the time being i'm relying on the route planner here Okay, I have to pitch up because the pitch is almost neutral. We are not climbing. So with pressing F5, I will pitch up the nose of the plane so that we start climbing again. This yellow warning here on the dashboard, it says that the plane is currently unable to auto trim. Now it disappears now. Maybe that was simply 
uh, too shallow of a pitch angle for the climb uh, fuel trim. This is now too steep. We're losing speed, so I want to reduce the climb rate to 10. Here, 20 is simply too much. You can also see how the yoke is moved by the autopilot when you press the F4 or F5 button. So a climb rate around 10 would do. You can lose a little bit of speed, but not too much, because you can make up for that once you've reached your um, cruising altitude. We have to accelerate to 1000 kilometers per hour anyway, once we've reached our ceiling. Okay, 2000 meters altitude to go. And then comes another tricky part because I want to lock the plane to the uh, target altitude of 17,000 meters. And to do that, you could either use the altitude hold, but in with these speeds and the, these uh, altitudes, the altitude hold button doesn't work anymore. That's what I figured out with trial and error. So instead, you can make the plane follow the flight director root pitch. So you have to arm this option and then activate it with the right hand arrow here. But most of the time, this button refuses to accept the command. So you have to uh, try different things with the pitch angle here using manual pitch with a yoke and then uh, autopilot pitch until it finally accepts this command to uh, keep the plane on the target altitude of 17,000 meters. So this is maybe due to the uh, simulation here in this special aircraft. But uh, this right arrow button here, it proves to be quite stubborn when you want to activate it. It normally does not work uh, when you try it the first time. Sometimes it takes several minutes and several weird pitch maneuvers before the, the autopilot finally accepts this command. Okay, we're now on our target altitude. I will try it. And it works at the first time. Ah, that's a charm. Normally it takes uh, many attempts to make the plane accept this command. Very nice. Okay, we have reached yet another waypoint. By the way, the distance to the next waypoint is here, shown on the left side of your uh, HSI instrument. So we just passed Nebom, and now we're heading for Bravo Tango, and these are 112 kilometers to go. It's the same for DME readings. So when you're heading for a VOR DME beacon, then here this, uh, these numbers on the uh, upper left side of the HSI instrument show you the distance in kilometers to this VOR DME. So now we're exactly at our target altitude, 17,000 meters. Also the vertical speedometer, it uh, goes to neutral. And now we have to speed up the plane, control page up to crank up the speed back to 1,000 kilometers per hour. And that should make the plane accelerate to Mach 2 speed here in the Mach speedometer. So this is active. Flight director roll, flight director pitch. It's all active. A little bit of fluctuation here with the pitch is not critical, it's no problem. So the plane should pitch down just a little to, to help us accelerating. Okay, let's crank up the engines a little more. This plane is constantly using its afterburners when flying supersonic. So it, the, those engines are not suitable for super cruise like 
those engines of the Concorde did. So to keep the plane above the speed of sound, you have to constantly use the afterburners, and that puts a lot of uh, mechanical and also thermal stress on the engines, of course. So uh, that was a real disadvantage of the Tupolev 144 compared with the Concorde. So I will pitch down a little bit using the F4 button because when the pitch is positive here, then um, it's impossible to accelerate to Mach 2. So we can still trade a little bit of this extra altitude that we've gained, 400 meters, to speed the plane up. Still. Pitch by flight director is still on. This is very important, especially when you want to use time compression to pass the time flying across Siberia here. This would take several hours if you just keep it uh, with a neutral time. So I use a four times time compression here and the plane keeps its uh, speed and altitude very reliably once you have reached the, uh, your target um, values of Mach 2 and 17,000 meters and switched on this option pitch by flight director. Let's pitch down a little bit more. So we're now at 900 kilometers per hour. Speed keeps increasing. Okay, and while we're speeding up, um, with trial and error, I found out that to uh, the right point in time or the right location to decelerate the plane and then to, uh, to sink to a lower flight level, this is bet somewhere between Belso and Dodul checkpoints. So Dodul is the latest point where you should... Um, where you should initiate your uh, slowdown and also descent maneuver. So I will pitch down a little bit more to help the plane accelerate to Mach 2. So I will soon end this first part of the Tupolev 144 tutorial and I will see you again once we've reached this second of the two options here for the slowdown and descent maneuver Dodul. Okay, so now finally we are on target, uh, 1000 kilometers per hour around Mach 2, and now I switch from velocity in kilometers per hour to keep the Mach speed here on the left yellow button. So the plane has adjusted to our cruising altitude, and now I will end this first part of the video and activate time compression to um, to cross the the Siberian plains and we, I see you again at Dodul. Hopefully, if you if you tune in again for part two of our Tupolev 144 tutorial. Thanks for watching part one, and hopefully see you soon. Goodbye.